What's up everybody? My name is Angelo and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to tattoo a rose in my style, how I like to do it. Let's get started. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how I set up. So right here is my machine. I got my machine on. I got the uh, power supply right here. And then I like to put a bag over it. So what I do with the bag is, so I have a bag. This is the open side. I just rip this little part off and then I bring it in there and then I tape it on. And that way when my machine runs out, I undo it, do it real quick, take out the battery and then put a new one in. Got the grip and with these, these wrap things, I just use a whole one. Some people like to put a uh, like paper towel in between it and then do the whole thing. I just like doing the whole thing because it's very squishy and some people like to uh, save some of this and use it for the next one. I just do the whole one. That's just how I do it. But yeah, that's my machine, how I wrap it. Here are all my needles. So for rows, this is what I like to use. These, these four are Cheyenne. And then this one is the Da Vinci. So this one is a 27 curve mag. This one is a nine mag, also curved. I like using curved mags. This one is a 17 curve mag. They're not bug pin or nothing. They're just all regulars. This one I really like a lot. It's the Da Vinci. This is a 13 curve mag out of all the Da Vinci and just all needles in general. I think this is probably my favorite one, the 13 curve mag. I don't know why, I just really like it. And then, the liner that I'm gonna be using is a seven liner regular from uh, Cheyenne. It's not a tight or nothing. I just like how this one is. Just for just for roses, this is what I use. Like if I was gonna go and do like a different type of style of tattoo, like a sculpture tattoo or or something else, I'd probably have different setup. But for just one single rose, this is what I like to use. And then here are my caps, and I'm gonna show you guys how I kind of space everything out. So first, got the got this. Open it up get some of this and I'll show you guys why I like to use this too but so for the main thing I got that put it right there just boom like that and now I'm gonna do six of these just one two three four five and then six and then I usually have this extra one right here for my white I just like kind of putting it back there because if my ink splatters while I'm tattooing over here, then it won't really affect the, the cap and I won't have to go and get a new one before I put the white in. All right, now I'll show you guys how I how I put my inks in and the style, like what I like to do. So this is just gonna be my black. This is what I'm gonna use for my solid blacks and all that. So I'm just gonna fill this one up all the way to the top. Usually if I'm doing, I spilled a little bit. Usually if I'm doing a bigger piece, I'll do two caps of black so I don't have to go in and put another one. Now, the intense gray wash. Now I'll show you guys how to do this one. So I like to fill the first one up all the way. The next one half. I eyeball all of this. I don't count any drops. Now this one, this one about 25%. And then this one, just letting the bottom fill up. Boom, like that. Just where the bottom was all there. And then this one, half of the bottom. I learned this from one of, one of my bosses. Boom. And then what I do from there, I got my water and I just spray it in. I don't do like witch hazel or nothing. I just like using water. And boom, that's, that's my drop system. These are the needles I use. My machine, you got it, you can check it out. Paper towels are over here, got a bunch of them. And then next, we're gonna start stenciling it. So first, uh, to find some roses, if you go on Instagram, you type in right here, rose reference, rose ref, you find a lot of different styles of roses. Go in here, check that out. Any that you kind of like. And then also you could go on Pinterest, go in here, type in rose. They have a lot of nice roses. And if you like, like, like let's say like a pink, you kind of get in that general area of those kind of colors. And then, so I'm gonna show you how I like to put some roses together to kind of make my own. So I'll, I use this app right here called Procreate. Procreate lets you uh, put things together and put them on the body. I'll show you that right now. So I'm gonna be tattooing my wife on the back of her leg on her calf. So I'm gonna insert the photo that I took of her calf right here. This is the back of her calf and I'm going to make it into that color. So what I'm thinking here, what I wanna do is kind of make it flow. Let's, let's make a new layer. When I look at this calf, I kind of imagine like a flow like this. So what I kind of want to do, so you see how like what I'm talking about, the flow is 
kind of like this. That's how I look at this lake. I'm gonna show you two roses that I found. I really like this one because of the outside petals, but I don't like the inside so much. So I found another rose. So first let me go into the color and make it a little bit more black and gray. So I really, like I said, I really like the outside. I don't like the inside too much. So I found another rose that I do. I like this one. I like this one a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the color like that. And then what I'm gonna do now, first I'm gonna erase this back part of it. Cause I, like I said, I like the middle. And then I'm gonna kind of put it to wherever I think would look kind of cool. Another thing that you could do with this is also uh, optical. So you could kind of go like that. So let's see if I kind of put it, let's go back a little bit. Like that. Now I'm gonna do the optical. Sometimes what you can also do is just get those ones out the way. We'll go to this one real quick and kind of erase this middle part because we know we're not going to use that. And then I'm going to go into that. Okay, I'm going to erase these. This outer. I'm doing this kind of quick because everyone does it differently. And when you start to play with this uh, app, You'll find things that I have and you'll probably find things that are quicker for you. You know what I mean? So this is just for me. So I think I know what I want to do here. So I got it kind of like that right there. So now what I'm going to show you guys, looking at the back of it more, more or less, going to go ahead and erase this part right here. really like that one right there. Erase that. Kind of right there. I'm gonna go over here. Erase this. I'm gonna erase this one. I don't know why, but I always move my images around like this. Cause I, I, I really don't know why, but. So I'm kind of looking at it like that now. Looks kind of cool. I'm going to turn it a little bit more like that. And then let's bring this up more so we can kind of see it just like that. So that that's how I kind of like to try to make roses, kind of try to make them my own. And if I like a certain style of one that I don't like of the other, I take that element and put it into another one. Some people think if you got an image that you have to stay with that image, it's not true like you can make anything your own it's art there's no rules so from that i will figure something else out uh when i actually draw the stencil then i'll uh do some other types of things that i want to do okay so now that we have this image there and this image there what i want to do i want to combine them so i can actually put it on the leg so i'm gonna pinch these together and now it is one image and i'm gonna bring back my old image of her of the back of her calf and erase this part no one wants a random pencil in their thing. Okay, so you can tell, got the rose right there. So what I'm gonna do now is opticality, cause this is what helps me kind of look. So with this rose, I kind of see the flow. Like I said, what I'm focusing on is this line right here. This line is like a thing like that. So that's how my flow is kind of going. That's what I, I don't know. Whenever I look, I look at an image, I look at the flow now. Let's say I was to do it straight just seems a little too off balance for me. even though it's straight it just seems a little too off balance for me and I like I like that kind of angle like that and I also what I really like is a triangle effect a triangle effect what I'm talking about is this you see that it's a triangle effect it helps it makes the image seem balanced I learned that from one of my buddies, shout out Lo, at Reclamary Tattoo. He always told me about a triangle effect, and this image has a really good triangle effect. This is what I'm talking about. It helps balance the eyes. That's just, that's one of the things I kind of look at. So I think with this is all good. I'm gonna definitely change the leaves when I stencil it out, and I'll show you guys that in a second. Okay, so now that we got the paper printed, I'm gonna show you guys how I like to stencil. So this is that stencil paper I was talking about. I like using the purple one, which most people do. So what we're gonna do first is rip off this part right here. And we don't need this, and we don't need this either. Some people like stenciling on iPads. I just like hand stenciling. I always did. Maybe, like I said, five years from now, maybe I'm doing it with the iPad, but for now, Oh, now, 
the this is right there that's right there so let's say boom comes on to the side right here that's how i do my stencil so now i'm going to stencil this out and then i'll show you guys some stuff so usually what i look for when i'm stenciling is like the outer just the outer lines like this that outer line and then i go and get this outer line right here since this is a rose that i put together with two of them it's kind of doing the ones that i that i like the, the ones that i didn't like and then this part right here probably do it something like that and probably bring something like that in there and then but even when i put it on the skin just because it's a stencil and it's an outline you ne you don't ever like like you some people can really follow the reference really good but you can also kind of do it your own so just because it's there does not mean that that's what you have to do you can kind of do it your own that's what kind of creates a style for you and what you want to do and then so now that i'm drawing some you can see it's starting to come together i'll show you a little more really hope this video helps you guys out because I'm, I'm gonna be honest when i first started tattooing i wish there was some type of video like this for me about all the uh equipment to use and all the right from wrong would have probably saved me a little bit of money too tattooing can definitely be expensive to buy everything you want to buy i totally understand that so right here i'm just gonna kind of do something like that and have this one right there like this one right here Okay, so now that we're we're starting to get into this center part, what I like to do, I really like to make my centers pretty dark. So even though this is light right here, I'm most likely gonna black this whole thing out. It just comes to when I'm actually doing the tattoo and then even maybe this side. Usually when I do roses, I like to make the center pretty dark. So if I'm gonna go in here, let's say these lines, when I tattoo it, they're black. It just, and for some reason, it helps kind of distinguish the center from the petals. When I do the leaves, I like to do those very dark. So it's like dark, light, dark. With the triangle effect, I kind of, it helps, it helps play with the eyes a little bit. I like it. So now that we're getting to the leaves, just got one leaf right here, and then I'm gonna try to make my own. Another one right here. And even though I got these stencils in here, when I put it on the body, I might do some adjustments. We'll see. So we got those two leaves on that side. Uh, I don't know if I'll do that one. Probably do some over here. Let's see, I'll probably do something like this. And then probably put one right here. And then this will be like a, probably like a smaller one. what I like to do is have like little thorns coming off of them. That, and then I'll just have one on this side. And then one right there. Or two right there. So I guess you can kind of see what's kind of going on. And then here I'll start doing like a little bit of shading where I'm going to put some shading. And then bring this over here. Like I said, when, I, when I'm actually tattooing, I always kind of do my own shading for my roses. I guess that's what kind of makes it my style a little bit. There's that. Okay, so this is probably as much as I make for a rose like that. Probably just something like that. Now when we put it on the body, we'll see, we'll really see what's up. I feel like I'm most likely not even gonna do these leaves. Probably just erase them when I put them on there and they kind of just like look at the look at the leg and most likely I'll I'll draw them in with the with the sharpie. We'll see. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you guys the first steps I do to clean off the area and make sure all the hair is off. So I get the green soap and I pour it on the paper towel like this first. And then I go like this on, with the green soap. This actually helps with uh, taking off all the hair. Now just got this and then we go like this. Make sure it's really smooth. You need to, you can put more green soap on. I like using green soap. Some people, maybe they use something else. I use green soap. Make sure it's all good. No more hair. 
You want it really smooth because if you tattoo and there's hair in there, you do have a chance of getting ingrown hairs while the tattoo is healing, then you got bumps and stuff. So if you go ahead and just shave it all off and have it be smooth, you won't really run into that problem. Next, you just kind of dry it off. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put rubbing alcohol on it just to disinfect every bit of bacteria or whatever could be on it. Better safe than sorry. So now I just put it on the paper towel and then I rub it on, make sure it's really, really clean. Okay. Next is wanting to try to place the stencil. So what I like to do, remember that flow? The flow like this, look at it, that's straight on. Turn it a little bit. That's the flow I want right there, kind of like that. Once I have it to where I want it, I'm just gonna place it with some lines. That way when I put the actual stencil on, I know what the general area is. So let's say I just go and put it back on. Boom, that's it right there. Next, we're gonna be using the stencil stuff this helps that stencil go on. So I'm gonna put it on a paper towel. Uh, some people like putting it on their hands and doing it. I like paper towel, putting it on a paper towel. It's a little, a little less messy. So I'll go like this, put it all around, all like right, that. Now, time to put it on. So, like I said, put that right there. This is usually the most crucial part of the tattoo. If the stencil's not good, then your tattoo will, you know, it can transfer onto your tattoo. So put it on like that. And then I just kind of like that, like that. The main part that I wanted to make sure was perfect was the this part. If these kind of don't come out too good in the stencil, that's okay. The main part is the, the center. The center is what makes the rose. The leaves help define it. Okay, now let me go over this way. There you go. Okay, so now I'm just gonna draw in some leaves with the ones that I really do wanna do. So I do wanna do this one, so I'm just gonna draw it in. And then I wanna put more of like one over here this way. And then, So there you go. That's the rose on there, all lined out. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna get started. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start outlining everything. And then after I'm done outlining, that's when I start doing the blacks. After I do the blacks, I do the shading. First, I'm gonna be using the seven liner to do all my outlines. Come on, focus. There, you can see how far that needle is. That's how far I like to do it, maybe a little bit more right there and i don't put the whole needle in when i'm doing a light outline i'm gonna be using my light gray wash the lightest one the one that i filled with half the bottom cap i'm just gonna outline everything with that i'm gonna get this petroleum jelly and right there okay so now got my ink in there got the light gray wash i put the petroleum jelly right here because when i put the needle in it doesn't make the ink splatter everywhere it kind of keeps it in one spot. How's it feel? It feels great. Feels like a tattoo? Yep. It feels like I've never had a tattoo on my leg. And I'm not putting the needle all the way in. I'm like riding the tip. I'm barely putting any of it in. Like that. And at this part, I like to pat it dry. If I keep wiping it, it's only going to irritate the skin towards throughout the whole tattoo. So like, if you're patting it like that, it gets the ink out. Get some of the petroleum, put it on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and outline this whole thing. And I got my power supply, it's at the 7.5, if you get the same one as me. I got it off of Amazon. Like I said, it was like 40 bucks. Like I said, this is the seven liner that I'm using. 
this is the liner that I like to use. And I ride the tip also, so it makes it a little bit thinner than what it would be because I'm riding the tip. Riding the tip means I'm barely putting the needle into the skin, like how far I got it out. Let's see if you can see how far I got it out. And I'm still riding that tip. The main reason I like to outline everything first is because if I accidentally wipe my stencil away, then I'm fucked. So if I just go ahead and just outline everything, I won't run into that problem. And even though like the lines will come out darker, as long as you know that you're, uh, you went into that, to that light gray wash, when it heals, it's gonna be that light gray wash. So don't be scared when you, you're tattooing and you see the line is a little darker, but you still went into that light gray wash. Cause no matter what, when it heals, it's gonna heal that light gray wash. Sometimes you just gotta trust your uh, your your drop ratio. If you're going into the light gray wash, it's gonna be light. Now, every ink is different. So just because I said that does not mean that it's true for every ink. It's true for the ink that I'm using. Also, what you wanna make sure you do is stretch out the skin good. So I use my fingers right here to stretch. And then I also use my palm to stretch too. And that helps with the ink going in like that. So you get that solid, consistent line in there. I know I should have said that in the beginning, but I just thought about it right now. Super late, but whatever. I think one of the most important parts about tattooing is definitely stretching the skin. That's what makes everything go in. Like if it was all like this jumbled up, and I'm like, I'll show you. If I go like this and jumble it up, like, I'm still going the same way. Now, if you look at it, where's that line? I seriously went in and like, I'm not stretched the skin. You see what I'm saying? There's like no line right there. But if I go like this and stretch it out, see how that, that's, that line's going in there? And you don't gotta worry too much about the stencil or the actual image of the picture. Like I'm talking about this image right here. You go and just kind of do an outline and then shade it your own. It's gonna come out your own style no matter what. Some people say it takes a minute to like learn how to do your style, but usually if you just do it one time, you're gonna know what your style is. You'll perfect it, but you will already know what your style is. How maybe not you, but the next person will. There's sometimes where people tell me, oh, you got a style, isn't it? And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But they know it, they see it. And I think that's what's cool about it. Right now, I'm just doing like the outline of it, the single line of it. When we go back into it with the actual black, that's when I'll make thick and thin right here. So it actually looks like some pokey thorns. Okay, so now looking at it, I got it all outlined. I'm pretty sure yeah, everything is outlined. And boom, that's how I outline a rose. So now, what we're gonna go in, I'm gonna do outlining again, but this time I'm only gonna outline the places that are no art. I'm gonna put in solid black. You okay? She okay? Yeah. Okay. So now, everywhere I'm gonna put the solid blacks, I'm gonna outline. So like this little inside right here, that I'm gonna actually do that all black. So I'm gonna outline it with the black. So now you can tell that it's actually a different tone. Then I'm gonna be doing this little inside part black. Like I said, I like the center a lot more darker than the petals. Cause I think the center, it helps it pop out. And then I do the leaves really dark too. Cause I think it makes the leaves pop out. And then I'm gonna be doing this part fairly dark in there, but I'm not gonna be doing the whole thing dark. So I'm still gonna outline it. So I'm just gonna shade in. So I guess now that I'm doing the darks, you can kind of see that I'm starting to shape everything.
Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna wipe it up with green soap and then we're gonna start doing the shading. So I got the wipe, green soap. Now we're gonna go ahead and wipe it like this. And the whole stencil is there, it's all white. Now this is just my outline. That's what I do every time when I do a rose. I do a little bit of minimal shading and all the solid blacks and the little solid blacks I can do with the liner. See, like that. Cool. Okay, so now we are gonna go into the solid blacks and the solid sh black shadings. So I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna check out my 13 mag first and then I'll probably go into the, the 9 mag. Usually when I pack in my black, I have it about this much out. Let me see, let me that a little more. How far I have it. Okay, so now I'm in my solid black. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna go into the middle. So I stretch out the skin really good. And then as you can see, see how far it's out. Now, you just wanna make sure you do everything one solid pass so you don't have to keep going over it. If you keep going over it, it's only gonna irritate the skin. So you make sure you stretch it really good, stretch it really good, like how I do. And then you get in there right on the line and you kind of do a little circle motion and you dig that needle all the way in so you don't have to go over it again. You see? Now it's in there. So I'm just gonna solid out this whole thing. You kind of want to have like about a 45 degree angle and you let it go into the skin. And the less time you go over it, the less it will have, to have a chance of scarring or anything like that. So that is really solid right there. And then I'm gonna finish it off just a little bit. So there is that. That's so now that's one little solid spot. And I know in the image it's not solid, but just like I said, this is how I do my roses. I like doing it like that. Now we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna get we're gonna make a majority of this flat. Have that angle in there and then get in there, just dig in there and kind of go out. And definitely for the for the client, it will hurt but in the long run when it heals and all of that it will it will heal real nice real nice and solid because you're not doing as much trauma to the skin as you as you would think then i'm gonna fan out some black going this way okay now i'm gonna go into my nine mag and try to get the little tight black spots. Remember, this is all my solid black that I'm using. I'm not using any gray wash yet. The more black that you tattoo in a piece, the more solid it will be. Now I'm gonna try to create a little bit of inside dimension, making this looking like it's in, more folded in. Like that. And then there you go, just a little bit. It's still all the solid black. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse my cup out, I mean my needle out. I'm going to my lightest, my darkest gray wash. Start shading some stuff like this. So I like doing like a very like whippy effect when I tattoo. And then I'm gonna look at the image a little bit. Clean out my needle. Going to almost light. This is all my light tone. Kind of getting it in there so there is a tone in there. So now that I usually this is how much I do when I uh, 
go for the center. Then after the center, I got, I'm gonna, I do these. And then I can see how much I can really tone out these pedals. So what I'm gonna start now, I'm gonna start doing these pedals. I'm gonna do these two up here first. And I'm just gonna do those in the, uh, in the 13 mag. Just make sure I get to the corners. I like doing my leaves very dark, so it helps pop out the whole image. So that's one leaf. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do all the rest. All right, so what I did, I did all the leaves, I did the middle, that's always what I start off with doing rows. So next, I'm gonna start doing the background shading, and then I'm gonna start doing in some darks. And then let me show you something too. So this is the reference, and that's the tattoo. As you can tell, for this middle part right here, I actually blacked it out. This part right here, I made it way darker. The center, way darker. And what I'm doing, I'm just making this rose my own style. I'm not, I'm not going straight to what this looks like. I'm making sure when I tattoo, it looks like my own style. That's what I'm trying to express when I'm showing you guys how to how to do a rose. This is because this is how I do it. Let's go ahead and start with the background shading. We'll go from there. So we're gonna start with the 13 mag, and then in the background shading, I'm gonna be using the the ink cap right here, the one that's filled with half of the uh, gray wash and I'm just going to go in and start shading it. Okay, so now that I got that much shaded, I'm going to go in there with a 27 bag and I'm going to be using the 25% ink cap. See how far it is out. So now what I'm doing, I'm going in with my lightest one. Uh, Scraping the surface, seeing if a little bit gets in there, like that. Then really lightly going over the skin. If your tattoo is ever red, it's cool, it's normal. Don't keep trying to go over it, trying to make a darker because once that redness goes down, uh, your tattoo is going to be even way darker than you wanted it to be. Just wait for the redness to calm down, then you'll be able to see your tones. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the, the wash, clean out my needle real good. And then I'm gonna do this one. I don't want the background to overpower too much. And I know it looks like a pretty gnarly tone, but once this redness comes down and it heals, 
I trust my gray wash. So all of this will be all gray wash. Bada boom, bada bing. See, it's kind of starting to pop out. I think what makes some black and gray tattoos really stick out is the background. So if you do like a tone in the background, like a background shading, I think it helps it out. In my opinion, that's how I like to kind of see things. Washing it out. What I'm doing right here, I want to do for this part a little bit darker. So if you look in the, in the reference, that part right there is all black. So I'm going to create some separation right there. I'm going to do like a little line of no, no ink. So it creates separation. I'll show you guys that in a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and background shade this up. And then I'm going to... Rinse out my needle. And go ahead and go into this white one and this white one. Kind of mix them around. So that's it for the background shading. Now I'm gonna start doing some of the inside and I'm gonna show you kind of what I look for. And then after that, we're just gonna go ahead and keep kind of going forward and not talk too much and just kind of finish that part of the tattoo. And then I'll show you guys how I do the white highlights. All right, so. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how I approach that separation that I was talking about. Show you guys how far my needle is. This is a 13 mag curved. This, we're gonna be doing this part right here. So, since this part is at the background, what I'm gonna do, share a little bit. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a little separation gap. So if you look, you see that separation right there? That's what you're trying to do. Now once you got it, you kind of just, now you can start doing like some, tone, some texture. I like to use my mag side and kind of drag it a little bit. Just do this the whole way. To kind of get like an effect like how this is, but still kind of make it your own. Get to this tip right here. I'm doing no separation. I only did the separation right there on that, that shading from the background. Going in a little bit harder now. Now you see that little separation? It just creates a little highlight that's under there. And I'm going to be shading that part in a little bit. So... Now basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to do another separation and then I'm just going to go ahead and tattoo regularly so you guys could just kind of see what I'm talking about.
black and gray, and now it's time for the white. So I'm gonna pour it in. I always do the white last and pour it in because the white tends to dry up really quick. So for the white, I'm gonna be using a seven liner. I grabbed a brand new one because I don't want any black ink mixing with the white ink. So let's start. All right, so check it out. Boom. That's how I do roses. So first I'm gonna show you guys how I like to wrap it. I just put a lot of petroleum jelly. Now I'm gonna wrap it up with this. Now I got it wrapped. We're gonna leave this wrapped on all night. Take it off tomorrow morning. We'll show you what, I, what we do after that. Buddy, just finished the rose. I hope you guys found it a little bit inspirational or uh, maybe you learned some things. Maybe you, there are some things that you overthought. I don't know. I try to keep a rose pretty simple because it, it too much, it could go too far and go a little bit too overboard. But um, yeah, the whole process was really easy. My wife, she sat really good. It took about two and a half hours to do. Some people, it takes them like 30 minutes. Some people, it takes them more than two and a half hours. Everyone is different. So don't ever try to compare yourself to someone else. Just do, stay in your own lane, do your own thing. That's really what it is. And if you guys did like the video, please comment, please like it, please subscribe. I hope you guys um, like it. See you in the next one.